David Ossick and is in the pocket is sponsored by the School of Rock Main Line. I'd like to thank the School of Rock Main Line, located at 511 Old Lancaster Road in Berwyn. You can visit their website at schoolofrock.com. As for Dave Marsh or Rick Allison. <laughs> Welcome to episode 118 of the Ooh. David L. Second and In the Pocket podcast, our second episode since we reunited, and our first episode here at the Studio 21 in Wayne. Uh, we're back recording in a, in a real studio. Yeah, that's very that's cool. Great. Not, that you're, not that there's anything wrong with your basement. <laughs> it's your my basement. basement was awesome. Oh, yeah, this but, was great, but yeah. this is cool. We're back in a real oh, studio, yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's, uh, yeah. and, and we have quite a guest for our Ooh, first time man. here in this studio. Well, I kind of knew what was, you know, what you guys going to hear. I didn't know the songs, but I knew the voice and uh, a little bit of it. I got a little sample of it, uh, but man, I, our audience is going to be blown away because uh, uh, Bailey is something really special. Yeah, her name is Bailey James. Uh, she's a young uh, a country doesn't really do it justice because she's got soul, she's got rock and roll, mm. a little bit of everything. But she's yeah. out in Nashville, so of course you know the, the country label is a natural. But waiting to hear her music and, and hear her story, yeah. and she's from Dave's hometown of Levittown, Pennsylvania, which is also Levittown, very cool. Levittown, baby. So Levittown yeah. in the house. Yeah. So let's let's meet her. Let's uh, introduce the great Bailey James. Hi, you guys are way too nice. Thank you for. Hey. How are you doing? I you just got back from Atlanta, huh? I did just get back from Atlanta. I've been recording an album there and uh, going to Atlanta pretty much every weekend. So I'm really never in Nash. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So this this is actually your first full length album you're working on? or? Yes. Yeah. EP when I was like 12 when I first started doing music. But I don't count that one in because that was just me experimenting with who I was. Yeah. So can I ask, are you, are you 20 now? Or is that how old you are? I'm 20. Yeah. About okay. to turn 21 in January. Oh my wow. goodness. Wow. So, and you've been making music since you were 12 years old. I started uh, when I was about 11 and then I came to Nashville around that same time. And that's when I started professionally doing it. Yeah. Wow. So you're 20 Girls years old and blazing. She's a veteran. <laughs> <retro -tree. laughs> totally, totally. I mean, yeah. this, guy's been doing, this guy's been doing it for 50 years. Yeah, so, well, you know. Know, long, long, long time. Yeah. But, uh, but I, I had the, the, the real fortune to, um, to, to meet Bailey. Uh, maybe it was, it might have been a couple of years ago. And that she had to be working uh, with an old friend of mine, Joe Niccolo. I, I don't know if anything came of that, but I know this much. That when I like I started hearing the track and her and sing and watching her work, I felt like um, like I was working with somebody that really had the goods and uh, an experience and and I got my complete attention and I was just kind of blown away. Thank you. Even with all that, when I heard uh, your music, what you're doing. Uh, whatever, where, where, I don't know where they came from. Those songs that you sent me recently, we heard, I was blown away. I mean, and my wife, Alan, was sitting next to me and I was playing the song. She was like, Who is that? Oh, and my. Yeah. So those are uh, songs that I've released throughout the years. So some of them oh, are yeah. about like three, four years old. Um, really? and they're all a little bit different. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to them in a little bit. Um, I, should we just start at the beginning? You said you got into music at 11 years old, Bailey. Yeah. Was it, were your parents uh, musicians? Was it just something like you just felt this is what I want to do? How how did, uh, and, and you got obviously seriously into it right away, you know, because, yeah. I mean, so so what, uh, could just take us, and we don't have to go, you know, all the way back, but just kind of a little bit about the story of how you got, you know, into music and decided this is what you wanted to do. Yeah, uh, my parents can't sing. And they can't write. They're not. They're not musicians. But um, I met your. I met your mother, by the way. It was wonderful. She's, beautiful. She's lady. sitting here. She's oh, sitting really? here. She loves you. Oh, she's great. <laughs> I was gonna say, my <laughs> my uh, my uncle went to. That's the only studio session he ever went to, just because he wanted to meet you. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's that's really nice. That's yeah. Really, really uh, nice. But no. So they always loved music. I grew up on. Uh, Johnny Cash. I remember one of my first memories ever of music was being in the car. I was on my way to ballet lessons and my dad would sing Walk the Line to me and Folsom Prison Blues in the car. And that was the first songs I ever Influence right there. That's great. Yeah, there was always a love for music. Um, 
And I basically, it's all I ever did. So I would get home from school and I would study as much as I possibly could just sing all the time. And I think my parents started to notice it. And we made this little EP with like uh, blue by Leanne rhymes and crazy by Patsy Cline. And I am operatically trained. So there was a little bit of opera on there. Um, oh. Yeah, it was wild. And we took it to Nashville and that's kind of where it all started for me. Right. That's where the journey started. I knocked on every door and was like, I have no musical experience. Yeah. But, I but love I, it. yeah, you should hear me, you know, right. right? So, so it, it's interesting because, um, like at 11, I knew, I, I, I knew what I wanted to do. I, I, right. knew, I knew I was going to be a drummer. I, went, I didn't want to play. I mean, I might have picked up a guitar here, but I, that's what I wanted to do. And that's kind of like, it was kind of like eating and breathing for me. It was the, mm -hmm. it was like some kind of kit and it was like, it just felt right. And I'm sure like with singing, you had, it was like, okay, this is what I do. And this is what I'm going to do no matter what. That's exactly how it felt for me. I think music is super therapeutic. And even at that age, I, I was never good at sports. I was horrible at sports. And I couldn't really find my niche until I started to sing. And then it was like, OK, I don't want to do anything else. I'm good at this. I want to do this. What about the writing aspect of it? Were you writing from that age, too? Or did that come a little later? So I started to write around that age, but I was embarrassed of it because I knew it wasn't good. And I remember one day my parents found it and they um. They, they encouraged me, even though it was really bad. They were like, keep going. Uh, I didn't really start taking writing seriously until I started, um, you know, getting older and listening to different artists and genres and kind of taking it all in and um, also just like experiencing, you know, life. I didn't experience any life when I was that young. But as I got older and things happened, it was easier to uh, yeah. write about the emotions I was feeling. Right. Do you remember the first song you wrote that you were really proud of? Um, probably Finally Free. Oh, which I think I sent. I might have sent. Yes. Um, well, that was yeah, okay. So yeah, we, we yeah. could we could listen to a little yeah, bit yeah, right yeah, now yeah, if you'd yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Love that. Right, let's hear a little Finally Free. James. So terrified, too scared to say goodbye. I didn't ever want to be alone. So I let you run my life to keep you from running out. Wish you would have let me go a long time ago. Cause you broke. heard that it was wow that's the reaction because you're i don't i didn't know what to I, full confession i wasn't all that familiar with you when right you, you were, you were going to be on the podcast so i'm listening to your music and i'm you know whatever you're 20 years old you're a country singer i'm, I'm i have a certain thing i'm expecting yeah, and right. then I hear the holy yeah, voice. right right, and right. it's just i was just blown away yeah, i mean that's just, yeah. that's just incredible and yeah. um and you that came out what uh 2021 just a few years ago yeah so i wrote it when i was 16. Okay. I, it was. I wrote it during my first breakup, so I had something to finally write about, and I was very there excited. Yeah. Um. And then I didn't release it till about two years ago. Yeah. Were you? Was there a because it was a personal song? Was there like a resist? Were you nervous about releasing it because it's an ama amazing song? It is. I. Yeah, thank great. you. Guys. Yeah. I I knew it was a special song, and I didn't want to release it at the wrong time. I wanted to do it right. Um. And. Yeah. The, the time I released it, it, it was kind of perfect just because it took on a whole new meaning after, you know, it wasn't just about a breakup for me. It was just kind of about me coming into my own. Um, and I think that song really shows um, where I want my music to be. Well, it's beautiful. It's, it, you know, like you could feel it. You could feel the emotion from that, you know. I mean, you get to that chorus and it's like, 
bang, you know. <laughs> I actually said that in the studio. I was like, I want the chorus to be as big as possible. Yeah, and he yeah. made it that way because at first they were just like doing everything, in the, which is fine. That's cool. But I didn't want it for that song. So well, it's, it's really terrific. It really is. A, Thank it, you. It's great. So let me. So I'm just going to ask about what, uh, you're, what, you're, what you're doing now. You're, now, it sounded like, were you recording that when we heard uh, Finally Free? Mm -hmm. Did you record that with an ensemble band in the studio with you and putting that together? How are you doing the new record? Is it in a similar fashion? Uh, who's not producing a new record? Who's producing that? So uh, there's a bunch of different producers on the new record. Oh, cool. um, I've When I went to Atlanta, it was kind of a whole different ball game. I had never experienced like being in the studio like that. So some of the songs I've just been... Um, singing without a live band and I've always sang with a live band. So it's definitely been different and unique and fun. And there's yeah. about three or four different producers on the record. Um, I just signed a record deal, which I haven't told anyone yet. This is the first time I'm saying wow. that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Congrats. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, That's big. That's really big. big. News. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's really, really great. That's yeah. Great. And there's a lot of, um, pop. May I ask you, what, what's the, the, the label? Is it? Is it? Do we? Can you talk? Oh, I can't. It? I can't talk about the label yet, but I can say. Uh, I did. Okay, good. Good. You signed a deal. Can't talk about the label, but that's good. Yeah. And so yeah. we know that this music will get out there, and we yes. will support it. That's wonderful because we all you. know that we need a you know we need a pipeline. We need a way to get yeah. the music heard. You know? We do, and I think some people they always are like remain independent, and I think for some uh, artists that is the way to go. But um, for me, I really. They just, they really wanted to back me. They believe in me. And um, there's a lot of pop and R&B on this album. There's really no country. So okay. it's going to be interesting um, to see how people react to it. Because it's still the same songwriting. Very right. personal. Right. Um, everything I wrote. So we'll see. You said I, pop R&B. That kind of, that makes, but that makes sense for you. Yeah, I mean, for my vocals. Yeah. 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 Well, I was I, the longest I, time I wanted to be country, but <laughs> I realized that's not really where my vocals are at. Yeah, yeah. I was fascinated by some of your influences, um, Nirvana, Patsy Cline. I mean, you know, that's, that's usually that's, like, that's usually a wide have, scope right. right there. It's a very wide scope. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, was that did you? I mean, did you listen to a ton of different things growing up? And were you, I mean, you mentioned Johnny Cash. And I know I've seen in interviews where you've mentioned Patsy Cline, but obviously also Amy Winehouse. I mean, you can love hear Amy. that. I mean, you, yeah. you have done your research. I love Amy. Um, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. She was the first uh, songwriter that, a female songwriter I heard. And I just felt like every word that she said, no matter what kind of music she did, um, yeah. I could feel it and that was super important to me and I wanted to make people feel the music more than anything no matter what it was saying no matter what genre it was as long as I was singing it with feeling is what mattered so yeah I listen to everything I love Donny Hathaway I love like the greats of soul wow. And blues. yes wow Donny had that's great I watched him do a session once you did yeah um, I, was, I, I when I was young I don't know if I ever told Andy this but I was uh I was cutting a track I, I was God, I was must. I think it was probably nine. I was at the Torpedoes. Okay, so let's go. Uh, guys from Levittown, and I went to New York. There was a guy that uh, he worked at RCA. I think I forget where department he worked, but he let us come in the studio. Uh, we went to RCA Studios, and you know, on 46th Street. Drove up there, and I I was just I wanted to walk around, and they, and back then, like all the, the doors, some of the doors were open. I walked in, in this one room, the studio, and I noticed uh, there was um, uh, a singer. And uh, uh, Roberta Flack was one of the other singers. Oh my gosh! Song together, and they didn't kick me out. I was just you know nineteen year old. Person. <laughs> I walked in. I thought they would throw me out, but they didn't throw me out. And I went back and I told my friend John Kuzma and 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 Bobby Woods and and, and Danny DiGennaro. I said I I just watched uh, this great singer, and turned out it was Nani Hathaway. You know. Oh my so pretty wild with things again, but like, but That's the fact incredible. But the fact that you would know who that right. is. Yeah. Oh, I, I try to oh. I try to really listen to uh, a lot of stuff from the 60s and the 70s and even the 50s. Yeah. My grandma really got me into like a lot of old Elvis. And uh, then I started to just dive deeper into other things. So wow. yeah, he's one of my absolute favorites. I yeah. think 
he's amazing. So wow. that, that's incredible. Yeah, that's pretty, yeah, pretty wild. I didn't realize the, the significance of it until much later. Like I right. just, you know, when I was younger, I was like, you know, we, we were recording. We were, I, I was like, <laughs> but I didn't realize later that like, I, you know, even that when somebody said Donny Hathaway, uh, uh, Roberta Flack was pretty well known at that time. But mm -hmm. I remember just, it was kind of like, uh, okay. And then years later, I went, I, I was there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was really there. But no, you know, no camera, no no phones and right. no social media to tell people. And but you that, got to fully experience it. Yeah, I truly, truly did, you know, so. Billy, have you had any moments like that yet where you were around someone that uh, just, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, seeing this person when, or? When I went, a few times i got to meet charlie daniels wow. right before he passed and i got to actually see him play devil went down to georgia wow. awesome. right that was pretty incredible was it yeah. was his hands were permanently like this just from playing for so long it was yeah, the most, yeah. Yeah. yeah and he was just so so sweet and so kind to me and he definitely didn't have to be so wow. i really appreciated that and i met lionel richie when i was on uh oh, American that's right. American Idol. Idol, right yeah, yeah and so you were, but when you did American Idol, you were 16? I was 16, yeah. 16. That must have been pretty much a, a mind blower doing that, right? It was, it? Was, it was crazy. And I did, I did say I was very, very adamant on saying, yes, I'm from Philly. Because they wanted me to say I was from Nashville. I'm like, no, I'm saying, you know, I'm from Levittown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good for you. yeah. Oh, wow. Awesome. Um, Good for but you. yeah, no, Lionel, I didn't realize how... Um, just legendary he was when yeah. I went. I wasn't a big Lionel fan, and then I watched the yeah. Weird the World sessions, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, he's the real deal." Yeah, we opened for him a couple of times, and I was in, I think, somewhere somewhere outside of Frankfurt, Germany, and and as always, the biggest stars, McCartney, Harrison, the ones that I've met, met Lionel Richie, massive star, couldn't have been. It was like almost like he was. He was so cool and collect and calm. Like, I'm going to do a show. There were like 20,000 people. <laughs> he was just, and he came and induced himself. He was super cool. And uh, yeah, he, we were all like, wow, man, Lionel Richie. He was the real, real deal and put on a great show. He was terrific, you know. I think you have to have that level of calmness. Yeah. Doing, doing what they do every single night. You have yeah. to have that. Yeah. So yeah, no, he was incredible. He was the sweetest. And he was actually one of the first people who said, um, your voice isn't meant for country. Wow. And he said that. And I, at that time, I didn't understand it because I was so young and it's all I knew. And then yeah. I got older and I was like, wow, he was really, he was really correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was a great experience for you doing that whole thing though, right? The yeah. Year. No, it was great. It was my first time I ever going on a plane. Um I so it was it was just a bunch of different experiences and yeah i'm really grateful for it yeah mom go with you she did and she oh. is she can't go on planes so it was yeah it was rough and on the on the way back we didn't have like music or anything no wi-fi no tv so oh. it was about two hours of just like trying to chill her out <laughs> trying to calm her down i just kept playing like songs that i had written on my phone yeah but that's all I could play. Yeah. 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 The world's changed since then for sure. <laughs> it yeah. has. It, it really has, you know, technology and everything on planes and what you can do on a plane and what you can get, listen to, watch. It's insane. Right. You know, it makes it a little easier for people that don't want to fly, you know. Yes. But, but that that did catapult you. You know, it's interesting about some of those shows that you did because you like American Idol, uh, because you were you did you really well on the show, right? You were in the top. I, I got to Hollywood week. I yeah. got to the first round. So I didn't go super far, but I did get enough time to like really experience. Right. Um, and, and also just get the, the advice that I was kind of looking for at the time. Yeah. And a lot of people saw you and you create, you got a fan base from doing that. Correct. Did you? Yeah, get like, no, I did. Yeah. yeah. Actually two Bucks County girls on American Idol back to back years. Wow. It was a year before Bailey. Um, right. Katie Turner from uh, Langhorne. So, we right. had the same vocal coach. Oh, okay. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. wow. Which is How pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. Katie, yeah. actually, I think she made it to, like, I mean, like the final wow. heat. Or something. Wow. Yeah, or something like wow. that. It was, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty, I, you, uh, know, I mean, you know, like, I, I just always got to ask 
you know, people that have been in it because, you know, as being like a little old school, I'm not sure. Like I'm going, are those, sh do they really work for an artist? They know, but obviously it does. Right. I mean, uh, it, it yeah. works for really good promotion. I think. Yeah. Very great promotion. Yeah. And, and back in the day, I feel like, um, they made massive stars like Carrie Underwood and yeah. Kelly Clarkson. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think back then it was a little bit different and now it still helps with promotion. You have a massive uh, presence on social, a massive amount of followers. <laughs> on social media. Yes. So I don't know, did that, did it kind of blow up after Idol or, or, or a little later than that or before that? Or where, where did you start? Honestly, a solid climb. Idol definitely helped. Um, but I always say, you know, I, I worked, for a very long time and i always try to answer everyone everyone's always like what's the secret to getting the followers and there was no secret it was just being consistent yeah. on my socials for 10 yeah. years yeah. and I making know. people feel like i actually you know want to talk to them i think a lot of artists miss that when right. they don't speak to their fans don't communicate with their fans it's like well then why are you doing it you know yeah you do it all the time right? you're, you're i've noticed you're, you 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 keep in contact all the time I got I it. My wife got me. Well, Dave's it. the same way. I, mean, I do. You know, TikTok. Are you yeah. on TikTok? I got a TikTok. Are you on TikTok? I did a TikTok video with my wife did of me. I got this weird way of eating candy. Like oh, those little things. And it got like 4 million views on TikTok. With me. Yeah, I'll send you the link. It's oh pretty my, cool. 4 million. Yeah. There are a lot of like I get comments like I want him to be my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with that guy? I had one video go viral. It wasn't my music. It was me um, talking about Nickelback oh. because <laughs> I was saying, you know, I, it was something like being raised on Nickelback, blah, 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 blah. And everyone's like, yeah. Okay. So, I got to check that out. I got I to check that out. You know? so yeah. That, I so, didn't think it would do anything, but you know. <laughs> you said you were heading back up to, you're coming up to Philadelphia, Levittown. What are you, what are you doing? I, I'm visiting family. I haven't seen my family in a while, so I'm gonna stay for about two weeks for Thanksgiving. And, Fantastic! Um, I need to find out if you and That's Dave good. ever like hung out in the same places. I mean, I don't know if places you hung out are yeah. still around. I don't know. Did Anybody? you ever go to Positively Records, Billy? When you on Warner yeah. Avenue by the Acme? Great, great, great. great. It's used, still a good record still a great store. store. Yeah, it's awesome. I feel yeah, like you would better. probably know more places. Yeah. yeah. She knows all the Levittown places yeah. that have. Do you want to come say hi? I used to play. Yeah, I let's bring Bailey's I love her to say oh, I'd be great. She always says, oh, no, I look bad. Like, oh, no, my God. Hi. Hey, hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Really good. Nice to see you. Really. Good. It's wow. good like a Levittown place. Uh, up at yeah. Five Points. I'm sure yes. you know Five Points. Vernon's. I mean, we used to play Vernon's Tavern. We used to play this place called Maddie's. And the Hooters used to play at Vernon's and play like five sets a night. We were finished mm -hmm. at 2 a.m. in the morning. We used to go at breakfast at that place called, it used to be, the. there used to be a diner on the corner. Yeah, it was Golden a, Dawn or something it was like Dawn, that. Right? Golden, Golden Dawn, right? Golden Dawn. Yeah. still there? Yeah, we would go there and I'd get home at six o'clock in the morning and then do it the next night again. Oh, oh, I went to all those places when I was yeah. younger. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Golden Dawn's still standing. Wow. <laughs> Which is insane to me. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait the to shop, there was an A and P on Newportville Road, and there was an Acme right there, and there was a Pizza Star in Warner Avenue, and there was a Joe's Pizza in the. There was a Seven <laughs> Eleven over there. There was Here's a bar. Yeah, it was like you know, Five Points was a really famous place yeah. because there were gas riots there. Were you yeah. around when they had the gas riots back there? Yeah, yes, like, like, it was. Like, yeah, it was. My crazy. sister got shot by a by. A, by like one of those rubber bullets when it came in. And my sister never got in trouble. I got in a lot of trouble. My sister never got in trouble and she was out. She just wanted to go to this spectacle and all these people were out. That ended up when the Flyers won the uh, in the 74. Well, my sister got shot by a rubber bullet. Oh my God. The next day I see she, her leg, it looked like it was like a black, the nastiest black and blue Jeez. mark, but Levittown, you know? Levittown. I think it was always a place. It's great. So go. nice to see you. You too. <laughs> you too. Go birds. <laughs> go birds. Go birds is exactly go. right. So, yeah. So, uh, but but you're living it, and you're and and, and you're 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 doing great. What, will you do a video with this? You know, are they going to support a video? The record company. Will you? Do oh a video yeah. With oh, fantastic. So as soon as I get back from Thanksgiving, I'm going back to Atlanta, and I'm shooting um, all the music videos. Oh, so cool. there's about we're, we're shooting about three. 
All right. Well, that's great. We should. So, do, oh, I was going to say we should, we should hear another song. Yeah, indeed. because I I want to. Um, you sent us the song "Don't Need You," which uh, oh, David and I both liked, and Rich loved our producer. And um, I I thought it was really cool how you name check like right off the bat all these like you name check Pink Floyd and the Rolling Stones and the Grateful Dead. <laughs> so it's like I was like. I, I cool. always say that was that that was my phase where I was about I was in my I don't know some year of high school and. Um, all I would do was like go around in my Pink Floyd shirts and smoke wow. my weed and <laughs> like that's what I was doing. Wow. And so that's what I wrote that song about. I, I walked into a write one day with um, uh, this guy named Nolan Neal and I wrote this song. So. Wow. Well, we're going to check it out right now. Don't need you from Bailey James. Hey, just thought I'd call you up and let you know. Found your old pink floor shirt you were looking for the day you left. Boxed it up with the stones and dead and left it lying outside on the porch. If you want it, you can have it. Just don't think that when you knock, I'm gonna hear you at the door. Cause I love the rhythm. I love the rhythm of you, like because I know you're really, in, you know, you 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 have input. You, I mean, it's your your songs. Yeah. But I I love how you um, I love how they sound. I love what's going on there on that music. It's it's it, really really great. That was uh, actually a demo. Yeah. So, true. Uh, and um, the guy who wrote it and produced the demo with me had passed before we could actually get the song fully done, and so. After he passed, I released that song about two months after just because I thought people should hear it because he just heard yeah. I, it was hard to explain. But when me and him worked together, he just heard what I wanted to hear that or, or he, wow. and I didn't have to really um, tell him. He just knew. Wow. So, you've yeah. found you've experienced some tragedy. I mean, yeah. no, for you know, Nolan, who you worked with and you lost your brother as well. Um, mm -hmm. That's a lot for anybody. Yeah let alone somebody, you know, a teenager who's, who's dealing with all this. Um, yeah. Can can you speak to that and maybe how it's influenced your your writing and, and, and your art? Yeah. Um, uh, so when I lost my brother, my brother took his own life when he was 18. I was 16 at the time and um, oh. or 15. I can't even remember something along those lines. I can't even remember the timeline. It kind of got all blurry for a couple of years, but um, I think when he passed, I realized that I wanted to talk more about mental health because I've struggled with my own mental health at times. I'm a creative, so my mind is always going and um, I have OCD and anxiety and um, for a long, you, yeah, for a long time, I just, they, the, everyone told me don't talk about it. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear the music. And I realized maybe that wasn't true. And I just didn't really care anymore to not share you know what was actually going on i thought it would help other people so i've talked about zane's story since he passed i mean as soon as he passed i was really vulnerable and transparent and i think number one it helped me heal um and it's just helped me also talk about my own mental health and um yeah. try to you know tell people it's okay not to be okay you can get help you can be transparent yeah. Um, it's important to talk about it. So sure is. That's and, a that's incredible, right? And you've yeah. done you, you you're a, what a national spokesperson for um, nice. Jason Foundation, so right? The Jason Foundation. That's actually how I met um, Charlie Daniels. He was a spokesperson for the Jason Foundation, and um, I've for people who don't know that's a group that helps uh, suicide prevention. Is that there? Yeah. Yeah. So they're a nonprofit based out of Hendersonville, Tennessee, which is you know, where I live. Um, and I met them when I was pretty young and I was like, I just want to help out. You know, I see how my brother struggles and my brother hadn't passed at that point. And so then 
you know, they helped me so much during that time period because no one talks about like when you're grieving, how long it takes to really get to a place where you're like, okay, I can, you know, get through the day again. Cause I was still doing music. I was still, there was no stopping. Um, yeah. And so they, they really helped me through that time. Yeah. It's uh, to be in that kind of pain and go through that. It's just, it's, it's no easy deal. It is rough. It's yeah. rough. And your work becomes your sanctuary, you know? It does. You know? It really and that's does. when my songwriting got really good. I hate to say that, but when things got really dark, oh. the songwriting got really good. So, yeah, it's pain motivates. Right. Know? Not that it, it's, 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 you know, I mean, you know, you're living your life and those things happen and you're not, you know, hiding from it. You're, uh, you're taking it on head on, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing and helping people too. Right. You know? Yeah. I, I have my own little, I call it the finally free movement. I made it after finally free came out and it's just, um, a place, you know, where people can talk to me. People come in my DMS every day talking about how my music makes them feel and how it's helped them. And, um, I think that's pretty incredible that they feel like they can uh, talk to me and be vulnerable with me. Cause that's all I ever wanted is to help other people. I'm so, so excited for your future because I think that you've got such an incredible, you're so incredibly talented and you got this beautiful soul. You're just really, you know, it's great to talk to you, but I think it's going to be like, you know, I, I, you know, people need to know about you, you know, you. To know what you're doing, you know, because it's, you know, it's, um, it's terrific. And it, it, we don't have enough people that are that vulnerable and transparent that are doing it. Uh, yeah. I, I think that. You know. I talk about that often. I talk about how people sometimes fall into doing music for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really easy to. It's really yeah. easy. To. So, yeah. Yeah. I try to, I try to always do it from the heart and from where I feel it can help people the most. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like you're very appreciative of where you are too. I mean, it's I it's just, there's there's so many talented people out there that for whatever reason, you know, don't get anywhere. And it's, yeah. it's, 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 you need I talent. Think, you also need to be, you know, luck in the right place, right time kind of thing. And yeah, you recognize that you had a gift at an early age. Yeah. And I was always humbled by my, family they would humble me automatically if i ever tried to act any certain way i think some love a tell that's happens that's what happened <laughs> how you get here you know it's like huh it's i always funny. tell my my grandma she i always say she's from trenton new jersey and she gets from oh, I love that. I love she gets that. really she's like, i'm not from trenton don't be yeah. don't tell people i'm from there well, speaking of Trenton, if you go to Trenton and you're there for two weeks, go to Di Lorenzo's Pizza on yeah. Sloan Avenue. You will, life will change. You know what that is? Di Lorenzo's okay. Pizza on Sloan Avenue and ask for Rick, my friend okay. Rick, and get a pizza there. You'll walk out going, oh my God, what happened, <laughs> what happened to me? You know, it's insane. Your mom yeah. will love it. You will love it. It's great. No, I'll try it. I think, I think sometimes <laughs> um, lead singers can get stuck in the me, 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 because People are always doing, people are always praising and people are like, that's just kind of how it goes. So I've been snapped out of it a few times. Yeah. I'm not perfect. You're to, I mean, you're also, you're also allowed to yeah, like, like a moment successes. like playing like the Bluebird Cafe, for example, which of you course. Know, right. that, that had to be a, a pretty amazing moment. The first, Have you played there just once or multiple times? So just once when I was 11, um, oh. I did the, the open mic where they still did the ticket. I don't know if they do that anymore, but you would take a ticket and you would either play that night or not play. It just depended on what, you know, place you were in line. And I remember, um, I just remember being so nervous. I was, I was always anxious to get on stage for about like four years. I was anxious to get on stage every single time I went on stage, but if I wasn't anxious, I didn't care about it. So there was no reason. So I look at it as like a good reminder that I care, but yeah, uh, my, my yeah. uncle actually, the one who came to the studio played guitar for me. Yeah, at the yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, we played a song that he wrote, and so that was a really special moment for the both of us. And wow. I didn't realize at that time I was like, "Oh, this is really cool!" Like, wow. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. That is so cool. Have you had any um, like particularly memorable gigs um, since then, or or anything that stands out? Obviously, Idol, but I'm just wondering about any particular live shows that. Uh, 
I played one in Utah, um, in the middle of Utah, and I actually drove 20, 23 hours to get there. So that was, I don't know why we drove. We'll never do, we, we, we won't, or uh, we'll never do that again. Yeah, anyway. Mom, um, mom, you want to get on a plane. <laughs> right. Oh, I will get on a plane. But uh, the crowd was so, it was kind of in this old theater. Yeah. Um, and the crowd was incredible. And I kind of feed off of that energy. And they sure. were the most. Sure, I get that. Right. They were just so sweet. And that was one of my favorite shows. I really, I felt like wow, we did a really, really, really good job. And so we went to Applebee's afterwards and rewarded. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was pretty good. Nothing like that live audience. I mean, I, I played, I was out this year. I did, uh, well, I, with the band, We the Hooters went out from June all the way up to September 18th. We did 55 shows. From oh September. Like, uh, we did Europe, we did 23 shows in Europe and then 26 shows in the U.S. We just did sh two, finished up two shows in the, at the Keswick Theater, but it was like a year, you know, it was really like tomorrow, like I won't see those guys for a while after until probably the springtime, maybe some social thing, but we did this, we worked a lot and I mean, I could feel it, it was fun, but that audience is what, every, <laughs> every, every you can be tired, you're on the bus, you get out, you right. get up, and you can do sound check and afterwards you're like, eat, and then I, you, you see that audience, all of a sudden you're like, Wow. It's like an adrenaline rush. It's yeah, hard. and then you're buzzing. And then I can, I find that it's always hard to get back. Like for me, I get on the bus. I I got a whole thing going on with my my Max. I wear my my Max to sleep, and then I go. I, but I love I love sleeping on a bus. Right. But it's it a while to get to to cool out after playing. You know. I just oh yeah. Juice. I up. think that I'm um, the same way because it's just all the adrenaline. I was actually watching this. Uh, documentary on athletes and how when they get done you know when they get into their 40s and they retire they have yeah. a hard time oh yeah something like yeah. being on that field and getting all that adrenaline yeah, and that when you're in your 60s <laughs> right <laughs> right that's Close all the crowd you know yeah it's, but it's great it's really great and i'm excited for you because you. you know, uh, I think I see tours ahead of you and all, all, the, you. Uh, all the thing happening. Preferably you know? without the 24 hour car ride. Though. Yes. Yeah. You know, yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm used to sleeping in a car now. I can yeah. pretty much, I can yeah. actually sleep pretty much anywhere. So that's, that's good for me. <laughs> yeah. I, I listen, that's interesting. You say that because I tell people that all the time, because when I was, you know, before there were tour buses and flights and stuff like that, we had our, road cases in the back we'd have a big enough vehicle where we could all be sleeping on it but i'd always crawl up into the back and i'd sleep on top of the cases i did that for a good you know i don't sleep know on top I, of the cases yeah i used to sleep on top of the cases and i'd sleep up there i mean from like 80 to you know like well it was a few years that i would do that you know i was i was sleeping because it was like i remember <laughs> there was no money i mean until we got something happening i mean we didn't make money for like a good five years and maybe six years until I started like seeing any kind of real money. And, 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 but we had back then, it was such a different thing with record companies. Right. I don't know if there's the horror stories that we, you know, like back then they, they, the royalty rates were really horrible and, and, you know, recoupment and stuff like that. But I still remember, I was just telling someone the other day about like, you know, finishing a tour and, you know, we'd get a little stipend to get by and a little PD and then, and then, and then seeing, like, I remember I saw an $18,000 check in 1986 and I thought I had arrived. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. You know, this is I would think deal. I had arrived too. Yeah. Yeah. That was like a big deal. And I remember, uh, of course, this is a year after you played Live Aid. It was a year you after already, Live Aid. You already yeah, arrived. played <laughs> Live Aid. And I, I an album at that we had point. A plan, you know, but, but then, you know, I started figuring things out. I started looking at, you know, well, you know, I, I, I had to. You get a, a, a backwards education about the business of music. Mm -hmm. I, I I could do the math. I'm looking at like, oh, you know, a million records, and well, we're doing this. But then I didn't understand like where all the money, like you What's know, money, record yeah. company stuff, take it in. You know, like not. It, it was just a different day. I think things are a little. I I believe and I hope that they're a lot more transparent uh, these days with that because but <laughs> we, we, we because we, you'd sell so many records and then all of a sudden you get. Like if the math's not lining up, like this doesn't look right. That's why so many bands flip out. I'm still, you know, it's it 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 you know it's tough, you know, and I and I'm sure that you're like considering all these kinds of things now with a record deal and all this kind of stuff. And we were 
I, I, we were very upfront about what we were okay and not okay with just because yeah. I, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. And the truth is you really, until you have a song that goes, you know, platinum yeah. or right. you have a one that has really good sales, oh, you're yeah. not making yeah. any money. <laughs> so you're working to yeah. make the money to yeah. put these songs out. And I yeah. think a lot of people don't, um, yeah. understand that. And so yeah. it's truly an investment. And you're, and you, and you're, uh, you're a writer. So, you know, yeah. you have the publishing and all those mm -hmm. kinds of records, sales and mechanicals and publishing and all those kinds of things that, you know, down the line, uh, you know, so many artists initially, like the first time they hear a deal, they're like, I want to do that. But sometimes mm -hmm. holding on to publishing can, you know, uh, benefit you in a big way later on down right. the line, you know? So, uh, but the writing thing, you can, you know, uh, you know, being a writer and a performer is, is a big deal. That's a big deal that you have that going on. Yeah, I'm very lucky that I was forced into the Nashville writing rooms from a young age. And I used to actually one time I fell asleep during one. I had just got <laughs> I had just gotten back from school yeah. and I fell asleep in the right. And I used to writing used to just feel so forced to me until it just finally clicked one day. And then I was yeah. like, oh, my gosh, I can. Yeah. Cause I, I used to write like poetry and stuff, but I couldn't grasp just writing a song in, yeah. until it, you know, it happened. And then yes. I, I got it. Yeah. Speaking of the song. So you've got, I think you've got like 20 singles out, something like that. Yeah. Um, 1920. So is this album, is this all going to be new material or are this going to be any of the songs you've already put out? What, what's the um... all new material? Cool. Wow. Yeah. I just shared a little sneak peek on my Instagram of, uh, like 20 seconds of one of the songs. But, oh, cool. Yeah. When do you expect it to be? When do you expect this record to come out? I expect it to come out by next spring. Fantastic. Oh, cool. That's yeah. exciting. So, yeah, that's really, really it's a good exciting. way to celebrate, belatedly celebrate your 21st birthday with yeah. you. With the, with well, I'm excited. Not even like I'm not going to, everyone get, goes crazy on their 21st, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to just. Well, wait till the album comes out. Then you can go crazy. Right. Right. I mean, it's amazing. If you're 21, you got, you, I mean, you probably hear from me because you, you, you know, I look at you and I mean, you're, you've been doing it a long time. You've been doing it like since you were 11 and really doing it, doing it. And yeah. here you go, like, you got like all this, you got some time to do some great things. Let's go, we're, we're, we don't have a lot of time left. And we, we, we heard from mom a little earlier, but I want to bring up mom and dad again, because not everybody's parents yeah. at 11 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go out to net. Well, we're going to take you out to Nashville. She's cool. um, I mean, we talked about that a little bit at the beginning about you going to Nashville, but was that, I mean, was that something that you had to like plead and beg for? Were they like, let's do it? I mean, it was. The, the weird thing is no. And um, I thank them often. I couldn't have done this without them. Yeah, what are their names? Give us your parents' names. My dad's name is Kevin. He's here. You want to come say hi too? Yeah, let's meet dad. Come here. Come on, dad. Oh come, come here. On. Come over. Come over. That's here. awesome. Hey, man. <laughs> well, we think you're great. Hey, how are you? Kevin. Nice to meet you, Kevin. Nice to meet you guys. And I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not an no, Eagles no, fan. No, no, no. I get it. I get it. Well, oh, he oh, said he's God. not an Eagles fan. You're from Texas. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Is, it Dallas? is he a Cowboys, a Cowboys fan? He's a Cowboys fan. So it gets Oh, okay. All right. All right. We'll we like mom better. <laughs> no offense, Kevin. We like mom better. <laughs> I'm telling you, when the Eagles lost the one game, yeah, you were distraught. I, I get distraught every time the Eagles. I leave. love her. What's mom's name? <laughs> Susan. Susan. Yeah, yeah. Susan. But yeah, no, they, they they've helped me so so much, and um, wow, yeah. I couldn't think. There's, I mean, Kev still helps me. He'll come to Atlanta with me because yeah. Atlanta's a lot different than Nashville, and <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, uh, you know. It, even we wish you the you know utmost uh you know the best and i i i, I but I, you got the goods you know so you you it, you just got to know that you know you're going to have people that are just going to be knocked out by by you and if you got the support mm -hmm. you know it's uh they were very ex we're excited for you man that's why i was like couldn't wait like i i would you know i think i think you're absolutely terrific you know, I absolutely. think you're terrific. So I appreciated you letting me come on here and talk about my story. Well, it's well no, this has been great. This yeah, is great. Yeah. If you, I don't know if the opportunity will ever arise, but Dave has this um, 
group of Philadelphia area musicians. Oh, I talked to her about it. That he plays with a couple times yeah, a year. I they, they record a yeah. few songs. They play yeah. live. Yeah. If, if it ever works yeah. out, yeah. Bailey would be oh, an amazing no, I, listen, asset for In the Box. I've been, I, mean, I reached out to her. I reached okay. out to her about it. And at yeah. some point, we're going to do it. We're going to yeah. get her in the Levittown. I didn't realize, man, you're going to come up for a couple of weeks. But at some point, we'll do it when, you know, after you're busy, but get you up here, really, the real deal in the studio and, and do something. It'd be fun. It'd I'd be love fun. that. I'd oh, love man. It. It'd be amazing. It'd be amazing to have you do it. It'd be great. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and feel free to send me like wait, what's going on in the news. We'll post it. Oh, yeah. It. Do you have, is there anything? Yeah. yeah we, we have the album coming out next year, but is there anything right now? That um, you want to promote, like where people can obviously they can stream your songs on other yeah. sites. Places um, they can buy them. Um, I'm there... on all streaming platforms. We're redoing my website right now, but it is baileyjames.com. Um, okay. And I'm super, super. Oh, look at that. Rich is on the ball. Rich is on the ball. You got a good producer. <laughs> you do. We're not I'm sitting super... around. <laughs> I'm super active on uh, Instagram the most. Yeah. So you'll see a bunch okay. there. Uh, okay. Bailey James Gang. Bailey yeah, James Gang on exciting. Instagram. Okay. That's really, really, really exciting. Bailey James Gang. So, you know, get it. Yeah, James, James Gang. gang. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah. that. That's super cool. Well, thank, thank you. you. Have a wonderful holiday. You, you too. Know. Thank you. And, and, and uh, maybe I'll bump into you in Levittown. We'll see. You, you might. I'll be there. All right. <laughs> thank Best you. Luck, it was great meeting you. Bye, Kevin. Bye, Susan. See you. Wow. How cool was she? Yeah. Oh, my God. You, I mean, think think um, how you were when twenty when you were twenty years old. Not like that. You were obviously already playing. I was playing, but, I was, but you didn't have the the confidence. Oh, she, and so I mean, and she's just, so composed, yeah, beautiful, and just you know really knows what she wants to do. And interesting when she talks about, um, you know, wh why she plays music. You right. know, I mean, like you know, she really seems to have her 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 priorities straight for somebody like that's for somebody that's like. 21 years old it just seems like she's already experienced so much and she really has i mean she's you know when she talks about the loss of her brother and she's already involved with a foundation and then when she talks about what she experienced with old american idol and some of the people that she's met and, yeah you know she's she's really a remarkable person man it's really incredible man yeah. you know so i am exciting to have her on yeah so yeah they, uh, they grow them right in levittown I think they do, you know. I, 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 you know, I've been having that conversation with some people. Um, yeah, I really do. I think there's, you know, um, you know, it, it. I, I think sometimes you got a bad rap, you know. Right. But there were some people like my a trumpet player friend of mine just uh, told me about about my high school, where there were two cats that came out of the high school that were like in band guys in the school that went on to do like. I'm, I'm fortunate, I don't remember their names, but he said, you know, these guys are touring. And doing like amazing work and like like real pro work and you know that's from like you know Truman High School which was Woodrow Wilson High School right. where I went to school yeah. and they had that great drama park program yeah. there and they've yeah. some like you know um, I I don't know what it is I don't know what it's in the water or or whatever you know people will tell you what they think there you know maybe sometimes and and uh, uh, but you know I like the fact that the artist community is still like you know they're getting getting uh, you know it's a good farm system you yeah, know for sure you know what i mean it's yeah. cool so we got a couple minutes before we go yeah. dave what yeah. the, let, let's update people on what you've been up to yeah. obviously you talked about the hooters the show two the weekends yeah, last two, week two, last weekend two, um yeah and you got uh the the documentary yeah. uh, about uh um this, this what the heart of the heart, heart of the, of the beat. beat heart of the beat right yeah there's a screening coming up at drexel drexel on the December fourth, they're going to show. It's a it's free. Anybody can get in. They're going to show the documentary. She's actually added like they did the premiere in in Philadelphia at the First Glance Festival, but it was the first time I was seeing it. So there were a couple of things that like kind of I said, you know, I played I did this I played with this band for a while. And she she actually did a few edits and filmed me and added a few things. Cool. Didn't make it any much longer. She razzle dazzle and did her thing, but you know I was really pleased that she added that. So. There's some new things. If you come, if you saw it before, there's some things you'll see. And um, so that's December 4th. And afterwards, Kenny Aronson and Quentin Jones and I are going to play a few songs. We're going to do a Q&A. We may play four or five songs and people can ask questions. Oh, cool. That's going to be fun. That's going to be really cool. And then the Hooters had that show at the, at the Keswick, which was like killer. Yeah. It was so much fun doing those shows. The sold out and the band was really good. We had a horn section. 
we had Mike Hood, Mike Cappy, and Jay Davidson, and they were just smoking, yeah. man. It was, it was, it was, it was so much fun. Well, you guys yeah. always, always killed yeah. at the Keswick. Every, every, I mean, but yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's like uh, uh, every year we do it, and I'm, I imagine like we're, cause we're planning. I already see people reaching out to me. And say, hey, I'm going to see you in Europe next year. So you know, I, I think you will be over there a little bit. I, I, you know. I can't imagine us playing as much as we did last year, but Eric and I, Rob and myself are doing camp out for hunger tomorrow with Preston and Steve. Oh, okay. That's, which will be a lot of fun. That's cool. Yeah. We're going to get, we're going to be like, I get up, uh, I get up pretty early anyway, but I'm getting up like, uh, I got to get on my way by around seven in the morning and we're going to play something like nine and one to three of us will put something together to play and, and help support their drive to get right. cans of food. For, sure. Sure. For it's great, oh, that's a great event yeah, they yeah. Do every year. Yeah. Every year. And it keeps on getting bigger and bigger and it's a pretty cool deal. You know, our Eagles come back, man. That's exciting. Yeah. You big know? one on Monday night. Yeah. Big yeah, one on yeah, Chiefs Monday yeah, night. Yeah. Sixers are playing. Sixers are, play, uh, Sixers are playing Thank great. God they got rid of Harden, man. <laughs> you know, like he's like just such a, you know, it's oh, just a bad seat for the team, man. Yeah. Well, between getting rid of Harden and, and getting rid of Doc. No, yeah, I, mean, no, yeah, I, I mean, love Doc I, as a player, and I loved him when he was yeah. on the, coaching other teams. I just he wasn't right for the Sixers. No, and no. this guy, uh, it, 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 Nick Nurse, is the is the best thing that's happened to the Sixers in a long time. Yeah. He has those guys playing like so motivated balls. It's ridiculous, man. Right. You know? Yeah. So you know, yeah. I heard that there's a guy that's going to be ringing the bell at one point. I don't know who he is, but. Are, are you? Man, are you man. Man. Whoa, 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 we got breaking news man, here. Man, man, are man, you man, man, We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Okay. I heard I'll let you know. Okay. All right. All right. That's a big one. Yeah. Um, just getting back to the documentary for one second. If you are a Hooters fan and you haven't seen it yet, you have to see it. Because there's the footage in there. The, 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 the Hooters footage in there is great. Oh, the doc. The documentary. Yeah. yeah. yeah and then, yeah. I mean, Dave, Dave led such an interesting life and some yeah. of the stories you have. But, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's a must-see if you're a fan of the Hooters. And, and But uh, just to hear Dave's story is pretty cool. Too. Joe came out. Joe came out a couple of days and she uh, followed a band in Germany. I'll tell you a weird thing that happened. And we did not plan this. We, uh, we were in Berlin and she, we went up to the Holocaust Museum there in Berlin. And before that, you, you go through the Holocaust Museum, there's another thing, that, an exhibit you got to go. What was it? An exhibit on drums. And I said, Jill, oh, did you plan? She goes, no. It was so weird, man. And they're like all this great art where these drummers were playing inside this. this uh, it was like they, they were like... Uh, they're in these tunnels and they had these drums set up in there and they were doing these incredible things uh, uh, with the, with the film and the sound and stuff like that. And drums playing in slow motion. In it. And I really thought, I said, you found the day that you're going to come here, but it was just, just happened to be there at the same, you know, the day that we were going to go to the museum, man. Pretty That's wild. Cool. Well, she, yeah. She did a great job. I the think she did. Yeah. She really I, did. She, I, 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 you know, I wouldn't recommend anybody, you know, waiting to the last day of the premiere to see, you know, cause I was like, I don't know if I can really enjoy this because I didn't know what was coming next. I didn't realize, you know, sometimes what I was saying. But she did a wonderful job, and she's just—I uh, think she's going to do some great things down the line too. She's, it was fun to do. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Well, this was fun. Bailey yeah. James, uh, it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, feels good to be back here with you, Dave. Andy, doing it's the podcast so, it, with you it's again. It's so great to have you back. You know, we really missed you, and people missed you, and well, you know, it did. You know. My wife missed and listening to you all with me. And it was like, I'm so glad that, you know, we can put this back together, work within their schedules. And, yep. and uh, you know, and I, you know, I, to, I like to have like Freddie come join us sometime because sure. he was helping me out. Oh, well, we got this nice big studio yeah. here. We can have a, yeah. get a few Yeah, I think here. it's going to be fun. It's going to yeah. be a lot of fun doing that, you know. So, and uh, of course, we still have our sponsor, the School of Rock. Those guys are still into what we're doing here. And I really, we really appreciate that. And, and being here is just pretty, pretty groovy. Yeah. Pretty groovy. Yeah. Thanks to the School of Rock Mainline. Yeah. Thanks to Rich doing an amazing job producing. Rich is the man. Thanks to Bailey James. Check yeah. her out. Yeah. Uh, Instagram, uh, Bailey James Gang, or um, find her. Their songs are on all the streaming sites. You'll, you'll enjoy the listening to them. And uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun. All right. Next time. For Dave, I'm Andy. We'll see you next time. David Osikin is in the pocket is sponsored by the School of Rock Main Line. I'd like to thank the School of Rock Main Line located at 511 Old Lancaster Road in Berwyn. You can visit their website at schoolofrock.com. As for Dave Marsh or Rick Allison. 